Moon Being Out in the Middle of the Daytime Productions presents... Okay, another installment in the Amplifier Adventure. I call it the Amplifier Adventure because... Well, it's kind of an, an, an adventure because even I don't know what's going to be happening most of the time. Now, this is the faceplate, or the front of it, or whatever you want to call it. You can see that I've put the buttons and the volume control in. You can see the rather messy wiring at the back here. As you can see, I have not wired in the volume control yet, because I'm just testing out the relay logic circuit, which is going to put the amplifier into the various modes. These relays will be connected up to the actual relays that switch the audio. So all right, let's just um, turn this on now and give it a little test run. Let's hook up the battery here. Obviously the re it won't be battery powered, but um, battery is good for now. So I could just get this connected. I've taped that onto the battery's terminal now. And you can see, you may be able to see, that there is a light on. Indicating that the amplifier will be taking in input from the auxiliary input jacks. So, if I want to switch it between auxiliary or phono input, that's what these buttons here are for. See, when I push these, the camera blurs. You can see it sets them in the various different modes. Let's just try to get the camera to focus again. Ah, oh, there we go. Also have tape monitor switches here. Switch between the different tape monitors. I'm not exactly sure why it's not switching here. Okay, I found the gremlin in the works. The battery I was using was simply just not providing enough voltage for the relays. So what I've done here is connected four PP3s. Two in series, two in parallel, so we've got double the voltage and double the current. So it's now running on 18 volts instead of just 9. And I just did a little test on it, and it appears to be working perfectly. So, let's go over the controls one more time. We have here the phono and auxiliary input switches. Here are the tape monitor buttons, tape monitor switches, whatever you want to call them. For tape 2 and tape 1. As you can see, it switches off one when I press the other one. And there's the cancel button down here to put it back into ordinary mode, which is either phono or aux. We have the tape dubbing, which when you press it, it automatically selects to listen to from the tape deck that it's copying to. So we have tape deck 2 to tape deck 1 or tape deck 1 to tape deck 2. And those red LEDs as you can see are pretty damn bright. It's glaring into the camera a whole lot. And of course to put it back into normal listening and press the cancel button here which takes it off the tape dubbing mode and back to ordinary um, tape monitoring mode. You will think for the word in a minute. It's the same for the other tape dubbing. And to press that so those two are up. And when you finish the tape dubbing just press the cancel button which is a bit hard to press. I think it's shorted out again. Yes, contacts on the buttons have shorted, which is why it's not why the button does not seem to be working. Because this this is a push to break button, and the um, contacts were shorted, so it wasn't actually breaking when I was pushing the pushing it. 
so I had to get it back into normal tape monitoring mode without dubbing anything. And there we go. And of course, you can always take it off tape monitoring mode by pressing this cancel button there. So, yeah. There we go. That's the logic circuit made. Now, I've just got to make the other relays connections for the other relays that will actually do the audio switching. <laughs>